there. Thank you. Meanwhile, we are also following developing news out of Baltimore tonight where a potential Ebola patient is in isolation at this hour. This is at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Right now, the state health department says an initial evaluation suggests it is not Ebola. However, results of testing will be expected by Tuesday. So this case in Baltimore comes as we get some good news about a five year old boy who was rushed to a New York City hospital last night. That child traveled to West Africa and had symptoms but tonight, tests came back negative for the deadly virus. Now, these cases highlight changes announced by the CDC just a matter of hours ago, and these new changes alter the way that people who have traveled to West Africa can come and live their lives once they return to the U.S. Ross played our live at the Satellite Center to explain these changes for us. Ross? Well, Leon, late tonight, the CDC came out with a new recommendation that people who are at highest risk for coming down with Ebola avoid commercial travel and large public gatherings, even if they have no symptoms. Some say it's more evidence as the government is sending out mixed messages about Ebola. Hundreds of U.S. troops are on the ground in West Africa fighting the spread of Ebola. Now comes word that the Pentagon has placed 11 returning soldiers in a 21-day isolation on a base in Italy, even though they have no symptoms. That new policy only adds to the confusion. This weekend, the administration slammed the governors of New Jersey and New York for imposing mandatory quarantines on returning health care workers. New Jersey placed nurse Lexi Hickox in quarantine, even though she had tested negative twice for Ebola. She complained her rights were being violated and hired an attorney, and New Jersey's governor freed her to home quarantine. I didn't reverse any decision. Why are you saying I reversed the decision? Now the White House says the policy will be left up to the states. Maryland's governor just announced that travelers returning from West Africa will be monitored for 21 days, and anyone reporting that they were exposed to Ebola fluids will be automatically placed in home quarantine. We have the ability, should we need to, to use a public health order. Virginia's governor and top health official announce similar guidelines for the Commonwealth. As of today, the Virginia Department of Health will take additional aggressive steps beyond what we're currently doing with enhanced airport screening uh, by initiating an active monitoring program of all travelers arriving from the countries of Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Now, we're told to expect similar new guidelines soon from D.C. All three jurisdictions have been working together to have a consistent regional response. Live in the Satellite Center, I'm Roz Plater, ABC 7 News. All right, thank you, Roz. Tonight, our sister station, News Channel 8, talked with the experts to get your questions about Ebola answered. Maryland's former secretary of the Department of Health says that what's troubling is the lack of uniformity in decision making. And the dilemma, the thing that troubles me most about uh, what's going on is that there is no single voice from the public policy. Sabatini says that the U.S. desperately needs a Surgeon General. Hmm. Well, stay with ABC7 and WJLA.com for up-to-the-minute information on the Ebola outbreak and West Africa and the effect it is having on the U.S. You can also follow updates on our Twitter and Facebook pages.